Oh, well, to receive an award like this is um, incredible. Uh, the, so many brilliant and distinguished New Zealanders working all over the world, and um, a lot of the things I've done have been here at home in New Zealand, and although I operate globally as well, but um, I think we don't look after our land and we don't look after our people, we can't be world class. So that idea of tangata whenua still still hold true to that. In this country we've got a, we've got a heritage that's about exploration and discovery and finding your, forging a new society in a new land and doing that quite quickly. I think um, the ancestors of Māori did that and uh, the ancestors that followed from Europe and then Asia and the Pacific, they all did the same. And it means that you've got to find your way around new landscapes, it means that you've got to find new ways of forging relationships, um, both with the land and with each other. And I think that makes people very creative and very innovative and quite resilient. And that's one thing we have in common across Māori Pacific, um, you know, the people that came here from Europe. I think we, we have that uh, experimental spirit in common uh, because the ancestors of Māori came here and encountered a totally new set of landscapes, nothing much like uh, the tropical homelands, and they had to survive, they had to innovate. And the same thing with people that came after them, uh, exactly the same. And I think we're still doing it, which is great, and we're doing it on a world stage. I think people underestimate how much can be learned from tikanga Māori and from Māori philosophies. Um, I mean, when you listen to what people are saying about Kia, and the whole idea is getting out there and making things happen. And I think of Modi tu, Modi order, Modi noho, Modi mate. You know, that kind of philosophy, sit down and stand up and live, sit down and die. Uh, that's all about just getting on with the job, rolling up your sleeves, um, taking on new challenges. Um, I learned, I've learned a huge amount during my life from, from the komatu and the elders that have taught me about, not just about tikanga Māori, but how to be a person. And, how to live in our society, and uh, there are depths there that have barely been touched, I think, by wider New Zealand. Well, it's a, maybe an unexpected project for someone like me to become involved with an ecological restoration project, but part of that was also that love of land, and the idea that, um, you know, Papa Tuanuku really matters, and getting to know a landscape and all the creatures in it and just seeing how vulnerable in fact many of our our species are uh, in the bush uh, on the land the bush is full of weeds the bush is full of uh, predators and a lot of these creatures are not going to survive and a lot of these plants are not going to survive unless we do something about that and when you get active on that front you meet a lot of fantastic people uh, but you also get to know the land in a new way and I've absolutely loved that it's, it's actually one of the most rewarding things, apart from the things I've done with young people, which I think is in a way quite similar because they're both about the future. Well, we set up a project um, that came out of the uh, First Knowledge Wave conference called Star Path. And the idea of that was taken from the old navigators who crossed the Pacific uh, to, to come to Aotearoa. And in finding their way from island to island, they would pick up a star on the bearing of the island that they were heading to and follow it up into the sky until it got too high in the sky to follow any further, to navigate by. And then there would be another one on the same bearing and they would pick that up and follow it and then, then another and then another until they got there. And so we thought this is a great way of um, thinking about the educational journey for young people. N number one is aspirational, you're looking to the stars, but number two, you're focusing on getting to a destination and helping kids successfully navigate their way to fulfill their dreams and their potentials. And at the moment, I think we're squandering the talents of far too many of our young people, especially our Māori and Pacific young people and kids from low-income homes. We're just uh, allowing those gifted young people sometimes not to find their way. We're sending them off down blind alleys. Um, a lot of them end up in trouble. Too many of them end up in places where none of us would want our kids to be. And that none of that has to happen, in my opinion.
I think it's really possible to change that, and that's what we're trying to do in Stapa. My whakapapa is that I have got um, a whakapapa that comes from Scotland. Uh, I have a lot of Māori relatives, and I have ancestors that have been involved in um, Te Ao Māori for a long time. Great grandfather who was a, a carver and a speaker, even though he was a Scot. Uh, he, he was a speaker of Te Reo. And um, I grew up in Gisborne, in, te, in Tairawhiti, and I was very lucky with the people I met when I was young. So I started to learn the reo when I was a teenager, and um, I've been learning ever since. It's interesting, one of um, my great mentors was Eruera Sterling, Eruera in our media from Whanau Apa Nui Ngati Pro. And uh, Eruera was part Scot. In fact, I, I think we were, prob we were probably related on the Scottish side, which is ironic. But he used to talk about, um, you know, taku, taha, you know, whānau apa nui. He would talk about the different sides of, in his own personality and he never seemed to worry about whether they all stitched together. So for one minute, you know, he could be whānau apa nui, the next minute he might be thinking of his links with uh, other parts, of Kaitahu, for example, uh, because he had a grandfather from Bluff. Um, his Scottish heritage was really important to him, he loved that. And um, I think you can do that. I mean, I think it's a, a very liberating not having to think of yourself as a, a single entity, but capable of turning now this way, now that way, um, and having a life that's really rich um, because of the things that you love and the relationships that, that you're a part of um, and, and learning from people that you respect and admire. And I've been really lucky. I've had some wonderful teachers.